Hey guys, this is the Betamax man again. Um, yes, my ED beta is up for repairs for the second or third time. Um, basically, what I'm having an issue with right now is my tuner is not working. Um, now, my tuner, I need that because um, I like to, what I have to do is use my VCRs to run my input video into my VCR and then it goes RF out to my TV because this TV is a new modern TV and it doesn't have RCA connectors. So the only way that I could run my equipment through the TV is by the tuner. Now I'm not talking about using the tuner as in trying to pick up channels or anything like that because you can no longer pick up channels. The analog channels are gone. I need the tuner working for channel 3 or channel 4. That's the reasoning for me restoring the um, RF input and output, the coaxial. The RF is a coaxial cable connector. So I'm going to look. I believe that the tuner is going to be located on the uh, bottom board here. So I'm going to get my screws. Let's take the screws off of here. Because i got to get to that bottom board. And I have done some repairs on this board. On this top board. As you can see the area that I put new caps in. Um, so this board has been worked on before. But not the tuner. So, because the tuner is on the other board, on the bottom side, I do believe, if my memory serves me correctly. I think I was, I think I did work on the Chroma processing board, but, oh, you know what? It says tuner right there. So this area of the board needs to be wor worked on. So I'm just going to flip it over here and we'll see what's going on. Yep, our tuner is on this board. Um, so that means I need to get something that will hold that board up into place here. Um, I'll use this because this is plastic so we'll just use this and I'll just use this that will hold the board in the place so I can take a look at here. Um, these Sony's were known for using uh, Elna capacitors which a lot of people know that uh, the Elna capacitors do have issues. They always either leak or they go bad. So what we need to do, so we'll take a look here and uh, we'll see what we can do. And it looks like my computer, I'm going to upload another video here. So uh, I got to do that. but. Anyway, yeah, so I'm going to put another video up on YouTube today. Um, so, let's see here. Um, let's just get it over here. So, and these are some Elna capacitors over here. So, I think I'm just going to start with changing those Elna caps and see because uh, you can see it says tuner on the board the one thing I like about Sony is they always mark on the board what they are um, and he here's a capacitor for 
the memory and what that'll do is like let's just say that you um, set the clock and you unplug the machine and I think in that memory what it does is it, it will hold the it'll remember the information the clock settings it'll remember it for I believe anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes so if you had an unplugged for 10-15 minutes and, and it came back and you plugged it back in it should still have its time and date and if it doesn't after unplugging it for even just a, a minute or so and plug it back in and the memory is wiped there's no memory that means you've got uh, a failure with the there's like a usually a battery or there's a uh, capacitor that uh, remembers the clock settings so that's just just so you guys want to see what, what what that memory thing is so um, anyway so we have two Elna capacitor no we have three of those shitty Elna capacitors that go bad so there's also some settings here too so also got to be careful because uh, I don't want to accidentally mess with any of these adjustments because these adjustments is what um, controls things like your your tracking uh, your your drum speed your idler you know I mean yeah just don't mess with those adjustments and some of those adjustments can also be uh, color adjustments so just if you're gonna move these adjustments take a pin and mark where the home position is so I would recommend just if you want to play around with some of these if you got an issue and you need to adjust the adjustments what I would do is take a sharpie pen and mark a line that way you know where the home position was and because sometimes if you're adjusting you can go too far and you can mess it up so you want to be able to get back to that home position you know just so that you could but anyway yeah <clears throat> and uh, let's go ahead and we'll dive into the tuner board now this particular board you know this one's been worked on so um, there's also another I think there's another Elna right there so the Elna caps but these smaller capacitors the smaller capacitors actually do they do go bad so um, I am going to order some of the 35 volt capacitors because I, I have, I'm also going to order some of the uh, bigger capacitors because I've got a machine coming in uh, that has some power supply issues. It doesn't have any power. So I figured I need to stock up on some of the bigger capacitors so which I've done so um, anyway let's get let's get started on this thing and uh, this is where I'm gonna look first uh, I'm gonna test those Elna caps first um, let me get my multimeter and we'll get those tested and uh, we'll see what's going on I I love the uh, analog meters. I prefer the analog multimeters compared to the digital ones. All right, let's check check some of these caps here. Um, so I'm gonna have to basically have this board. I'm gonna lift. I just wanted to lift it up for a little while, and I'm gonna have to go back and forth so let me test out some of these okay let's see what the um, make sure 
Oops, Lord, you know. negative side is, is over on the, okay, so my negative is on this side. Okay. That one's registering, okay. That one's bad. Uh, okay. Let's see what this one is. And that one's open. That one is completely open. What is that one? Uh, C616. So we'll change that one because that one is completely open. Let me check a couple other ones here and see what ones those are. Let's see what those are doing. So, okay, let's see here. That one is open. Yeah, we've got quite a few, we've got two or three. Right now, I'm detecting two or three that's open. So I'm trying, to, trying to do it so I can see here. Well, that one's okay. That one is open. Yep, that one's open. So it looks like I'm just going to change out um, quite a few of these caps here. Uh, so change this one out first. Got to get my, I need to get my ironer hot here. So I'm going to get my, I'll set up my, my iron here and we'll Gotta move move the camera over just a little bit. Uh, we're gonna come right back, and when I come back, I'll have my ironer nice and hot, and uh, we'll be right back. My uh, iron should be nice and hot now, so I think we can get uh, get start working on this thing. Um, I got some Q-tips out. I actually was looking at a, a person that was doing a repair video, and uh, he was when he replaced the capacitors, he would uh, clean the solder joint with alcohol, and I thought mm, maybe I should try that because it really does. What it does is uh, it removes the uh, flux and the flux can create kind of this yellow uh, brownish color and so it is kind of makes for a real nice neat job if you clean the flux off after you're done soldering but I don't know I got the q-tips out maybe I'll do that uh, I just put some q-tips over there so I thought mm, nah what am I gonna use them for well maybe I'll do that I don't know anyway so ones that I'm going to pull first is going to be this one over here. Let's see, it's down here. It's uh, C616. Uh, is the one I'm going to pull out first. That one was, let's get my iron. I think it's nice and hot. Let's, let's adjust the temperature a little bit here.
just gonna I'm hoping they haven't been leaking but you never know never can remember to put the plunger down when I start using it again. And sometimes I have the temperature low, so sometimes I don't wait for it to melt. There we go. There we go. Pull that one out. I gotta be careful because if these have been leaking at all, it can damage, I can damage the trace real easily by accident. <clears throat> change there we go sometimes you gotta get a little aggressive when you're pulling them out this is not an Elma though okay this is a 16 at, at uh, 47 seem to use a lot of the uh, sixteen volt at uh, forty seven. Seems like there's a lot of those that are used in the uh, beta machines. Uh, I think it's just a very common capacitor, the sixteen volt at 47 <clears throat> it's just a, a very common capacitor i think so let's just change this one here and i'm not uh, all that great on doing videos so you know i don't really have a uh i need to get a uh, tripod so i can do better videos because um it's hard for some people to see what I'm doing without one, so... Okay. Pull a little solder. Let's get my solder out here. So it's kind of hard sometimes, I think, for you guys to see what I'm doing, but I try to do the best I can. without the tripod. There we go. I'll always clip the leaves off too, so you don't wanna you don't wanna forget to take the leaves off because if you forget to take these leaves off you can touch something else and if it touches a different component it can either short it out or cause it not to work. Usually it'll short it out if you got a lead touching another uh, piece here. Okay. I'm going to have to get my little cutters sharpened a little bit. So. I'm gonna have to get some new ones because they're getting pretty dull. Oh shit. Oh man. Okay. That one's done. I don't think it'll take too long for me to uh, 
change some of these out. Um, what I'm going to do though, I take a, sometimes I'll take a sharpie and I will put a black dot on the capacitors that I are going to change. That tells me that I've already changed it. And so I just, I like to mark it because uh, then I know that, okay, what ones did I replace and what ones did I not replace? Well, if I mark them, I'm like, okay, oh, here we go, okay. So, you know. That way I know what ones I've changed. Looks like there's an Elda capacitor there, too, so. I'll probably change that as well, but these ones over here that are going to need to be changed. tip maybe my temperature is a little too low I think my tips starting to wear out yeah sometimes these tips especially the cheap ones they go out quicker than a good one will so I'm gonna invest in some better uh, tips This one, this cap, looks like it might have been leaking a little bit. So, let's change that one out. This has been leaking. Yeah, that's definitely been leaking. not going to show changing all of them because that would be a lot of video to go through. Okay. And this is an Elna. It's a 10 volt at 47. And I do have those. I'm getting a little low on the uh, lower caps. The, the 16 at 47s, the 10s at 47s. They're getting a little low, so I need to restock my supply. And I think instead of just keep replying, re buying more and more and more of these, I'll just I'll just buy a big lot of the caps that I'm running out of. I don't know. Sometimes it's cheaper to just to buy the whole capacitor kit than it is to buy them individually 
That's basically what people are doing. They're buying these kits and then they're selling them individually, making money off of you. So. Next one, uh, the next one we'll change here is this one right over here. Now this one wasn't bad, but I figured, you know what, while I'm in here, might as well just re recap. I'm only going to recap the uh, tuner area. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to recap the whole, you know, board, but uh, just that one area. So, the first thing is that I'm noticing that my video is done. Ready to upload it to YouTube. So we'll change out this cab. We'll change out this cap and I'll take a little break. Get that video starting to upload onto YouTube. So you guys can see it but I did a, uh, a power supply rebuild on a uh, Sears branded uh, Toshiba beta VCR okay. yep this is a uh, Elna I'm wondering if this one's bad let me check. I bet you this one's bad. I thought it wasn't, but maybe it is. It's a freaking Elna. And the Elnas are always bad, so. Yeah, this is uh, that one's open. That was completely open. So. So that one's a 10 at 47. There's a lot of 10 at 47, and there's a lot of uh, 16 at 47 that get used on the beta machines. They seem to be a pretty common thing for those things to need changed. 
the uh, 16 at 47s are uh, for uh, they use them on the um, circuit boards for the uh, idler motor the uh, video head drum motors so the, the the 16s at 47 are widely used the 10s at 47s they use those in the head amplifier of the beta machines Got my show on pause there. As I was watching, I don't want to. I don't want to have my video going while I'm making a video, so I turned the, the thing on pause. The screensaver came on. I need to get a new set of these because these cutters are getting quite dull. They've been used a lot over the years. I've had these for approximately four or five years, so the fact that they're just now going dull is pretty dang good, but they're uh, Stanley, and I believe I got them over at Walmart, but I'm not really sure. Let's see change out this one too yeah let's just change this one out as well This is a 63 volt at uh, 47. Check to see if I have one. I think I do, but I'm not sure. I may have to put it back in. If I don't have one. There we go. 
I got one. My last one. My last one. On the 63 at 47. Okay. Make sure that's the right one. Okay. Yeah, let's start my... I'm going to go start my video here start the uploading on it so that while I'm working on this baby I can get these soldered in here so let's just replace that one I'm just going to go ahead and uh, finish um, putting the caps in um, and then uh, we'll be right back and then we'll see uh, if there's any change in my tuner. We just see if my tuner will come back to life. I've got one down there I need to change too. like it'll take too long for me to uh, change some of these out. Um, what I'm going to do though Take a, sometimes I'll take a sharpie and I will put a black dot on the capacitors that I are going to change. That tells me that I've already changed it. And so I just, I like to mark it because uh, then I know that, okay, what ones did I replace and what ones did I not replace? Well, if I mark them, I'm like, okay, oh, here we go, okay. So, you know. That way I know what ones I've changed. Looks like there's an Elda capacitor there, too, so. I'll probably change that as well, but... It's these ones over here that are going to need to be changed.
Okay. Uh, this tip, maybe my temperature is a little too low, I think. My tip's starting to wear out. Yeah, sometimes these tips, especially the cheap ones, they go out quicker than a good one will. So I'm going to invest in some better uh, tips. Yeah, this one, this cap looks like it might have been leaking a little bit. So. Change that one out. This has been leaking. Yeah, that's definitely been leaking. I'm not going to show changing all of them because that would be a lot of video to go through. Okay. And this is an Elna. It's a 10 volt at 47. And I do have those. getting a little low on the uh, lower caps the, the 16 at 47s the 10s at 47s they're getting a little low so I need to restock my supply and I think instead of just keep replying re buying more and more and more of these I'll just I'll just buy a big lot of the caps that I'm running out of. I don't know. Sometimes it's cheaper just to buy the whole capacitor kit than it is to buy them individually. That's basically what people are doing. They're buying these kits and then they're selling them individually, making money off of you. So. Next one, uh, the next one we'll change here is this one right over here. Now this one wasn't bad, but I figured, you know what, while I'm in here, might as well just re recap. I'm only going to recap the uh, tuner area. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to recap the whole, you know, board, but uh, just that one area. So, the 
first thing is that I'm noticing that and my video is done. Ready to upload it to YouTube. So we'll change out this cab. Change out this cap and I'll take a little break. Get that video starting to upload onto YouTube so you guys can see it. But I did a, uh, a power supply rebuild on a uh, Sears branded uh, Toshiba Beta VCR. This is uh, Elna. I'm wondering if this one's bad. Let me check. I bet you this one's bad. I thought it wasn't, but maybe it is. It's a freaking Elna. And the Elnas are always bad. So. Yeah, this is uh, Elna. And the Elnas are always bad. So. Yep, that one's open. That was completely open. So. So that one's a 10 at 47. There's a lot of 10 at 47, and there's a lot of uh, 16 at 47 that get used on the beta machines. They seem to be a pretty common thing for those things to need changed. The uh, 16 at 47s are uh, for uh, they use them on the um, circuit boards for the uh, idler motor, the uh, video head drum motors. So the, the, the 16s at 47 are widely used. The tens at 47s, they use those in the head amplifier of the beta machines. Got my show on pause there. As I was watching, I don't want to. I don't want to have my video going while I'm making a video, so I turned the, the thing on pause. The screensaver came on.
Yeah, I need to get light. And I need to get a new set of these because these cutters are getting quite dull. They've been used a lot over the years. I've had these for approximately four or five years, so the fact that they're just now going dull is pretty dang good, but they're uh, Stanley, and I believe I got them over at Walmart, but I'm not really sure. Let's see, change out this one too. Yeah, let's just change this one out as well. This is a 63 volt at uh, 47. Check to see if I have one. I think I do, but I'm not sure. I may have to put it back in. If I don't have one. There we go. I got one. My last one. Last one on the sixty three at forty seven. Okay. Make sure that's the right one. Okay. Yeah, let's start my I'm gonna go start my video here start the uploading on it so that while I'm working on this baby you can get these soldered in here so let's just replace that one I'm just going to go ahead and uh, finish um, putting the caps in um, and then uh, we'll be right back and then we'll see uh, if there's any change in my tuner. We just see if my tuner will come back to life. I've got one down there I need to change too.
Okay guys, um, I've got my tuner, um, recapped, um, I did run into an issue, uh, when I was trying to break the excess lead off of this capacitor, it damaged the trace, the trace lifted up off of the board. So basically what I believe that I will have to do is jump put a jump wire from that lead over to here because this is where the lead is going to so I just have to jump a pin across and uh, that'll that'll be fine I can still fix it but let's just see if um, I got a tuner back let's just see I think I did because I can hear I can now hear the tuner and I now get a kind of a static but you can hear the tuner so let's just see if we got the tuner back. I'm going to hook up my laser disc player to the input of the tuner. I'm going to use a coaxial cable uh, and uh, we'll turn it on to channel 3 and that should have a blue background uh, so that will tell me if my tuner is working and remember I just want to get channel 3 or channel 4 working because that's what I'm going to use so let's see if I fixed it but I can now hear the static and I could not hear it before so but I do want to move this um, I think my tuner has come back to life. So. Alright. Okay, guys. Um, basically, I've got my coax cable from the laser disc player, which gives a blue background when it's turned on and I've got it going into the back of the uh, machine here let's go to we got VTR is on let's go to channel 3 and see if we have a picture <laughs> We have a tuner. Our tuner is now working. Um, now the uh, trace, what I did was take a lead off of another capacitor and bridged the joint because the um, you can see that the uh, trace uh, basically tore off because my when I went to cut the excess lead I went to cut the lead off and it pulled on the joint and it pulled the lead right off the board but I think that that cap had also been leaking as well so that was causing damage but at least I now have a tuner so I can now put a laser disc film into that laser disc player and uh, we can do a little uh, testing on the tuner because the tuner is now working I have a working tuner well what other problems am I gonna have with this thing well I don't really know for sure I, I do know that uh, 
I've had issues with issues with this machine. Put a disc in the laser disc player and uh, we'll see what the tuner looks like because all I can see is a blue screen but I need to make sure that I get my, my colors are correct because we need to make sure my colors are correct so let me get a laser disc that won't be too hard to find and then uh, we'll uh, show the tuner Got a laser disc in. We'll see what the colors are proper. Want to make sure that that tuner is working. And I would say that my tuner is working. So what I can do is I can make a little test recording, and we can see how good the record is. I I still having. I actually still having some issues with the record so uh, but I did a little bit of research and uh, the panel on the bottom here this panel underneath here that is going to be the panel um, that has that does all the video video process the color chroma processing the chroma processor is on that board uh, way underneath here underneath here is where that board is and that's the chroma processor for recording so i'm gonna have to um do that but i'm gonna record a little bit off of the laser disc here i cannot show too much because i don't want to get a hit with a copyright because i've already lost one YouTube channel, I don't want to lose another one. So, but I can show like that, and you guys can kind of see what's happening. I can kind of show you that. That way, you guys can see that it is working. I can show you one second, two second, boom, that's all I show you. That's all I can show you. But we can do, uh, we can do a little test recording. Um, I do have some. Let's see, I have. Yeah, I do have some of these Betacam tapes, which I can use. Yeah, we can. We can use the. just use this tape to do a test on it. Yeah, honestly guys, I was not sure I was going to be able to get that tuner going. I was about 70% sure I could get it going. But I was still a little bit worried. So let's hit record. We're on ED beta, so we can hit record. So we'll just let it record just a little bit of this. And, uh,. Trying to think of where am I control auto audio control is for my UV there's there we go they're right there in the center so it, it looks like uh, I'm a little bit off on the left channel the right channel is coming in fine but the left 
I can see is a little bit less so uh, that might be head amplifier um, I don't remember if I did the head amp or not I think I might have done the head amp if I've recapped the head amplifier uh, that could be kind of a head that's starting to wear out and I bet you this ED beta machine has probably seen a lot of hours um, because what happens is is the the hi-fi the the heads that do the uh, hi-fi audio um, the, the heads are wearing out because they use the the video head does both the video and the hi-fi audio track so and the head amp and if the head amp has been recapped I could check for other components such as a transistor or a resistor and see if maybe uh, one of those have failed um, but if I narrow down the if I go to the head amplifier and I recap everything and I check all the other components like the transistors because transistors do go out transistors go bad they can cause issues too so um, even like it could be a diode but uh, I don't know I don't think there's a diode in the uh, head amp in the power supply though the power supply has a diode in it so it could be caps could be transistors uh, I'm not really sure so let's go ahead and We'll take a look at the uh, recording. I'm just going to stop the laser disc here and then we'll go ahead and rewind this. Mm -hmm. uh, it does have a good picture, but we got those little. We're still got those little static lines and uh, that's going to be on the on the bottom board so that's the next thing is to get this recording next thing is to get the record to work properly so uh, that'll be it on this video and uh, tuner has been repaired and I'll see you guys in the next video bye bye